Hello, everyone. I would like to greet you uh, on this uh, great, nice Friday evening, at least in Poland. But I know that you are in different uh, time zones, so uh, we we can deal with people uh, here uh, who, who enjoy uh, early morning uh, or, or uh, late afternoon. So once again, um, I'm very happy that you are here with us and that you are joining our discussion. We have three great guests today uh, for representing uh, different approaches, different uh, cities and different countries. So that's our great pleasure to, uh, to be with you. And um, I, I would briefly uh, remind you that uh, our Indelt uh, project with Farid uh, Kilichkaya will join us uh, soon. Uh, it's an international discussion platform. Uh, that's why uh, it's very important for us all uh, to have you here to discuss, to, to uh, exchange ideas and, uh, uh, and uh, any, any kind of good practices. So, so that's really great um, that you are here. Uh, we have three presentations. That's our plan for today. Uh, the first will be um, Asma Rahmani, sorry for my pronunciation. Um, uh, then we have Christina Schox and uh, Antonio Tagliala Terra. Uh, so uh, we, are, uh, we are very uh, curious uh, about your stories, your great presentations. Uh, and um, uh, the schedule will be uh, following after the presentations, after our presenters uh, will um, uh, deliver their speeches. There is time for discussion, for your questions, for your uh, thoughts uh, and, and uh, all inquiries and um, possible suggestions, comments, whatever. Uh, that's why we, uh, I, I really would like to, to encourage your, your participation, your active participation, uh, because that's, uh, that's our idea. So um, uh, I think we can start from Asma, Asma Rahmani. I will, um, I will introduce you if, um, uh, if I may. Um, Asma is, uh, Rahmani is an assistant professor at the Department of Media and Communication. Um, it's Batna University, Algeria. Uh, she holds her uh, PhD in TEFL. Uh, also, she's an assistant lecturer at the Department of English and other uh, at Batna University and other universities. Uh, she taught several um, uh, subjects such as academic writing, research methodology, phonetics, ESP, EST, e-learning, and communicative practices. She also teaches bachelor, master, and doctoral phases. She published several national and international uh, articles. Uh, okay, I think that uh, we can uh, we can start uh, your presentation. So welcome and. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, organizers of this webinars, the uh, responsible of the in-depth uh, platform. I'm uh, very happy to be part of this uh, event. And without any delay, we'll start sharing my screen. Yes, is it clear now? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's perfect. So, um, as Joana uh, introduced me, I'm Dr. Esma Hmani, a lecturer at Batnawa University, Algeria. And my presentation is entitled The Effectiveness of Moodle Platform in Distance Learning. So here is the agenda of my presentation. We'll talk a bit about the educational platforms in general, and we will focus on models, resources, and activities, namely the glossary, wiki assignment, and bank of questions. So as an introduction, we can say that um, uh, two important uh, uh, Factors uh, affected our life's domains. These factors are namely the globalization and second, the, the spread of uh, new technologies. 
Of course, the domain of uh, education is not immune from these metamorphoses. And this was clearly felt during the three last years, uh, mainly because of the spread of the coronavirus uh, from, 19, uh, from 2019. So uh, in Algeria, uh, the use of these educational platforms, as in many countries, was mandatory after this pandemic. And uh, our teacher here, our university lecturer, highly appraised the uh, use of Moodle as it assisted them. Uh, and it was a uh, secured online educational environment that, uh, that enabled them to pu post, publish various teaching materials, uh, activities, and it was an excellent medium for instruction and collaboration. So Moodle is one of the popular LMS it stands for a uh, modular object oriented dynamic learning environment. It has been developed by Martin Dogiamas as part of his PhD uh, thesis in education. And uh, the main or the major philosophy behind the model is providing maximum instructor control and minimal administrator control. So how this model was effective. So according to my own experience and uh, teachers' uh, viewpoint and perceptions, Moodle enables learners to be more responsible about their learning. And the variation of activities succeeded to capture the learner's attention and raise their motivation. Also, it encourages uh, the collaboration and discussion uh, among our uh, between learners. This, of course, uh, enabled them to have more peer feedback and teacher feedback. So uh, using this platform, uh, or in using this platform, you can depend on many uh, scenarios. So uh, you can rely on what is called the entry system, followed by the learning system, and finally the exist, uh, exit sorry, system. So concerning the entry system, uh, as you can notice here, uh, the teachers should provide the necessary information about the course. He can use many, uh, many tools to attract the learner's attention, particularly this use of the online learning was uh, very, or uh, was not common uh, among the Algerian uh, university uh, learners. So as you can notice here, you can provide the uh, name of the department, the name of the uh, subject, the version of your course, the last update, the summary of your subject, the prerequisite, uh, competencies that you need in order to uh, adhere to the course uh, or uh, different courses, the main subject and the uh, course uh, su uh, subjects, or sorry, objectives. Also, considering the entry system, in the system, it is preferable to use what is called the pre-test in, uh, in order to test the uh, objective of your courses before uh, providing learn uh, learners with the needed uh, uh, with the needed uh, learning materials. Uh, also, it is preferable to, um, uh, to provide your learners with, with the necessary information about you, such as the, your, your e uh, address, uh, email, uh, email address, the, your um, phone number, if possible, um, the, the number of your um, desk, etc. After that, uh, you can uh, enrich the content of your course depending on the uh, models, activities, and resources. As you can notice here, uh, we have many uh, activities, and the main difference between the activities and resources in Moodle is the fact that activity is more interactive. It needs uh, the learner's reaction. So here we have, for instance, the assignment, which I, 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 I focused on uh, this uh, activity here in my presentation. We have wikis, you can create, for instance, games such as crossword games, Sudoku games, groceries, quiz, questionnaire, uh, the big blue button. Here it's the video conference of this uh, platform. And here we have the uh, resources. You have here books. Uh, the book uh, in general, it is a um, collection of many files or many folders. Each chapter can contain many, uh, many, um, sections of the course, if you can say. We have here files. You can here upload uh, Word files, PDF files, Excel, it depends. Uh, the label here, we use it uh, generally for um, alerting learners about new dates, for giving them notes or remarks. 
Here we have also the uh, hyperlinks. You can use hyperlinks in order to enrich, as I said, the content of your uh, courses. So the first thing I have used, and it, uh, I, it gained a lot of satisfactory among my learners, is the glossary. So what is a glossary? Glossary is an activity because learners, as I said, interact with it. Uh, as other activities, of course. It assists them in the organizations of key terms and definition in a particular subject. Its importance lies in the fact that it permits learners to build their own knowledge or their knowledge together. I mean here they assist learners to uh, learn collaboratively. Also learners or teacher can browse by alphabet, date, category, particular terms, or even author name. Uh, of course, you have many uh, things uh, when you uh, try to do this or try to apply this glossary with your learners. For instance, you can duplicate the entries. Uh, that is to say, you can allow two, uh, two learners to post the same thing. Uh, you can allow your learners to comment on each other entries or terms. Um, uh, here you can offer what is called the linking glossary entries. Uh, if a term is added to the course page or items within the course, then it is automatically hyperlinked to the glossary entry. Uh, I would like to mention that the glossary was very effective in the phonetic subjects as it uh, assisted learners to um, categorize the main or the most important notions. So whenever they need to uh, go back to them, they will find uh, a well-organized uh, part of the course uh, that, contains the all, uh, that contains all the definitions. So the second thing or the second resource is called the assignment or it is also uh, the submitted works as we know uh, in, in the usual terms. Uh, it, uh, the assignment uh, assists us in organizing the received works, uh, that is to say the reception of learners' works through model courses. It would be better than emailing them, as you will avoid clustering up uh, your email uh, box with a lot of mails. It can be designed for a particular learner or a specific group of learners or entire class. Uh, you can write instructions or you can add even links when you are uh, write in the instructions. Uh, you can include images in it or even video related to your assignment. And finally, learners may text type it online or upload files of any type uh, of answers that the teacher uh, advised them uh, to, to post, uh, sorry, to upload. So the uh, following uh, resource is called the wiki. It is similar, uh, similar sorry, to uh, the well-known Wikipedia. It allows the students to establish a collaborative document by setting up pages together. It can be useful in case of group uh, project or writing a combined essays or research. Uh, the, unlike the other collaborative editing programs such as Google Docs, the wiki is a standard model activity. That is to say learners need no permission or logins are needed, uh, or logins are needed sorry, to, to enter or to develop this wiki. Each wiki can have a particular and specific name. And although wikis are usually collaborative, it is possible to allow each student to create their own wiki for individual use. So uh, basically the wikis assisted me in the subjects of um, academic writing, civilization and literature. As um, whenever I ask the group or uh, group of learners to develop certain, uh, certain uh, Pro a certain essay, for instance, about a particular notion, um, learners can do it together uh, at one time. And the last thing is the bank of question. It can be useful to create tests and quiz activities uh, within the model courses. It allows teachers to create various questions when uh, he is creating the course content and save them at the same time. It will generate more positive result, uh, results sorry, if the division of the creation of the courses depend, depends sorry, on particular models such as Bloom taxonomy. Now we move to the, sorry, the usefulness of this question of banks. So it assisted me to limit the plagiarism percentage uh, among my learners. It assisted uh, to check the learners' understanding about particular courses or the course, courses elements. 
it offers also a variety of questions that motivates that motivates learners to raise their self-assessment and autonomous learning. Now, um, this is the uh, possible uh, type of questions that the bank of question uh, can offer. You, we have here the multiple choice questions, true, false questions, matching, short answers, essays, drag and drop markers, drag and drop into text, etc. Now, for instance, whenever you want to uh, create a, a quiz or uh, a test, you uh, will fill the instructions. Uh, for instance, I want a test of 10 questions from each category. I will select, for instance, two questions from creating category, from evaluating two questions, two qu questions, sorry, uh, from analyzing category, etc. So uh, this will enable you to have or to test uh, all learners uh, from, from several, uh, excuse me for the, these noises, but we have here a wedding. Uh, Okay, so here, here you will, sorry, you will have, uh, you will be allowed to test uh, your learners depending on the same categories or testing the same categories. And also no two, uh, no two similar learners can have the same uh, test. So by doing this, you will lessen the uh, percentage of plagiarism among your learners. So finally, we can say that the variation and activities, uh, the variation of activities and resources in models and model, sorry, platform motivates the learners and teachers. Also, what we note is that these uh, variation of activities and resources enabled the learners to um, promote the international and promote and uh, upgrade their personal skills or soft skills, such as listening skills, communication skills, time management and empathy. And as we all know, these skills are mandatory to uh, improve the autonomous learning type. Uh, sorry, which is a prerequisite uh, thing in our uh, in this millennium. So that's all. I hope that uh, my presentation was uh, attracting you. Uh, if you have any questions or inquiries, I will uh, be happy to answer them. Uh, now I will uh, let the floor to uh, Dr. Joanna. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Thank you. I really enjoyed the wedding. So congratulations to the newlywed uh, in Algeria. It must be very interesting. Uh, great. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your informative and, and well prepared uh, presentation. Um, I guess um, there will be time for questions, but after, after uh, all presentations. So um, now you can relax a bit and we'll ask uh, uh, Christina, uh, our second presenter, uh, for the short contribution. Uh, so thank you uh, very much, Asma, for now. And uh, thank you. And, and Christina. Uh, Shox is our uh, second uh, presenter. I'm, I'm really sorry for my pronunciation. Uh, by the way, how do you pronounce your, your name properly? It's search, Christina search. Christina search, great. Uh, Christina is um, a teacher and teacher trainer. So the best per uh, person who will tell us about the practice of teaching English as a foreign language from Hungary this time. So we are moving to Hungary. Um, and um, uh, her um, uh, scientific interests uh, are connected with uh, with language, with um, uh, different fields of teaching as well, um, uh, language analysis. So um, uh, I'm I'm uh, really happy to have you here, and the floor is yours. Thank you, and thank you for introducing me, and also for for offering the possibility to be present here. And I, I was especially happy uh, listening to Asma's presentation and uh, mentioning her uh, learner autonomy, as this is one of my hobby horses and uh, my uh, major area of research. Uh, so thanks <laughs> for the opportunity. And now I'm going to share my screen. Um, does it, okay, it's, it's okay, yeah, okay. It's, it's visible, mm -hmm. great. 
Okay. Uh, so as you have already mentioned, I'm a teacher, trainer, and language teacher in a college and also in a secondary school. And now I'm going to uh, reflect on my experience gained in the secondary school, which is a medium-sized um, comprehensive school offering uh, uh, accounting, logistics, and information technology specializations, uh, where students learn English and German, and they have to uh, reach either B1 level by uh, the end of uh, of their final year, or if they uh, get a at tertiary education, and they usually set the goal of B2 or C1 uh, language exam. And I'm going to present you the, the timeline, uh, the chain of events that uh, um, followed uh, in Hungary during uh, the pandemic uh, situation. And then uh, I will uh, elaborate on um, my two major uh, challenges and uh, uh, um, present one uh, locally developed application and another function that uh, proved to be helpful uh, for me to solve uh, my problem during uh, uh, distant learning. Um, as for the chain of uh, events, well, first, uh, the first wave of uh, the pandemic situation um, brought us uh, in March to the close down of um, the total close down of education from um, um, nursery schools to um, secondary education and um, we had to switch to uh, from face-to-face -face education to distant learning from um, the overnight actually and there was no guidance or restriction for institutions which uh, uh, online platforms to use so this depended on the possibilities of uh, uh, the individual institutions and as the change happened overnight uh, we were thrown into uh, relatively uncharted territory. Uh, so we needed to adjust uh, the ways we teach very fast. And after returning back to school in September, uh, the same year, it could be seen that the second way was on, on its way. So we started preparing to uh, close down by, by spend, uh, sending home um, classes that were directly impacted by the virus, uh, which meant that uh, we had to um, Mm, so part of our classes was uh, spent in uh, the classrooms and another part uh, of them online. So that was a very difficult period as well. And then a few weeks later in November, um, only secondary schools switched to digital education. This time we were more prepared technologically, but uh, more vulnerable for the psychological effects uh, of remote teaching as uh, it shattered our daily routine. We experienced alienation, depression, and even uh, burnout. <clears throat> and then in uh, May, uh, we went back, uh, back to school and this time again we used mixed platforms but in a different way uh, dur uh, during this period uh, individual students um, could join classes online uh, while uh, the majority of uh, the class was present uh, at school. Uh, and by the end of the year, we could conclude that uh, uh, overall student performance, de performance decreased uh, while uh, grades uh, uh, became higher. So uh, performance wasn't mirrored in, uh, in grades. Um, as for the resources we could rely on, um, Microsoft Office was introduced to all state-owned schools, uh, so a secondary education had the possibility to, to use Microsoft Office, even though not all schools um, actually used it. And then in 2020, November, all teachers were offered free internet connection. As for um, there is the local resources at school. Uh, well, we were an IT specialized school, so I think that uh, we were relatively privileged in this uh, uh, sense. So um, earlier, before the pandemics in October, there were trainings for the staff and online students groups were created in teams. So we started using uh, Microsoft Office from um, from the very start and we were continuously provided with laptops and tablets and later on in March students needs were monitored and uh, uh, their, their uh, needs were uh, met. Um, um, and as for 
um, individual resources. So what I uh, added to what was provided by, by the state or, or by, uh, by the school. Uh, uh, luckily, uh, we could have access to the online version and teaching resources with interactive school uh, tools of uh, the course books. And I think that teaching English uh, again, put us uh, English teachers in, in a privileged situation as uh, there's really a huge, uh, um, huge variety and range of uh, uh, resources uh, created for educational purposes. Um, and as a member of uh, the National Teacher Association in Hungary, I received free access from uh, 2020 February to um, an application developed in Hungary called Xeropan Classroom. Uh, this is an AI uh, powered language learning platform for individual and for classroom uh, based language development. Um, as well, which later on in 2021, 20, uh, September uh, was made available for uh, public education, um, freely available. And now it, uh, it includes German language and they are uh, working on uh, including, including a Spanish language uh, as well. Um, obviously we could also rely on, on the increasing number of websites and applications. Uh, uh, due to the sudden shift and uh, several resources were made freely available for a limited period. Um, you can see some of uh, uh, the most um, frequently used ones on, uh, on my screen. And I also attended uh, webinars and uh, Q&A sessions uh, to develop my digital methodological uh, knowledge. As for the challenges um, I faced uh, during the first uh, wave of um, the pandemics, first, I, I had mixed feelings. Um, I had high expectations as I saw the shift as an opportunity to uh, increase my autonomy in teaching. And also um, I found it a great way to develop uh, learn, learn autonomy uh, of my learners in language learning. Um, I anticipated network issues uh, from students' side and also my own side, but my greatest wor worries were um, connected to developing uh, speaking skills and differentiation. And uh, in speaking skills, um, as we used, um, the whole institution uh, used Microsoft and uh, uh, the communication and um, the paperwork and the actual lessons were, uh, were done through Teams. Uh, I found um, at the beginning a way in Teams how to uh, use, um, how to apply group work. And later on, um, Teams uh, in Teams appeared uh, an added function, the breakout rooms, which, uh, which helped um, um, helped uh, keep the time, set the time, and also sorted out uh, um, students into pairs and groups. So um, time management uh, was uh, more feasible uh, to breakout rooms. And also I could increase uh, student talking time, uh, which was a great concern of mine. And um, Xeropan Classroom, and I hope that you will be able to... Um, see my screen when I switch to Xeropan. Uh, we still see your presentation now. Okay, then I will just explain how it works. Um, so actually it's, um, it's an application that students can reach through their mobile phones. Uh, they have to download the application and um, teachers uh, can put their students into classes. And uh, um, so it actually works like Microsoft Teams. The basic difference between Xeropan and uh, Microsoft Teams is that Xeropan has uh, um, 
a huge uh, material, huge English teaching material in it. So I can set the level of my students. I can set the particular topic. I also can search for um, uh, grammar areas, vocabulary areas, and I can assign uh, tasks to either to whole groups of students or to individual students. And uh, this provided me with, with a great way and a relatively easy way for differentiation. And uh, um, also um, it has an element of uh, uh, speaking development because students uh, could, uh, could talk to a robot while um, this meant a relatively uh, limited um, a possibility for speaking, but still uh, it was somewhat more than uh, it uh, might have been uh, without that. And through this application, I could uh, follow my students' progress and uh, um, also their strengths and weaknesses. I'm sorry for not being able to share um, uh, the actual uh, surface. Maybe if you stop sharing the presentation for a moment and then start only the, the website you would like, maybe that way we, we can try. Let me give it a try because uh, it would really worth. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that would be, of course, great. Don't worry, maybe, maybe just oh, let's give it a try. Okay, then I yeah. hope that I stopped sharing and now I guess I have to leave my presentation and open Yes, yes. Set of plan. Okay. Let's, let's try this way. Mm -hmm. So the surface you can see is uh, well, in a minute. Uh, mm -hmm. I have to sign in because uh, it <laughs> dropped me out. You know, teachers nowadays need, uh, <laughs> need to be multitasking, you know. Well, actually, I'm happy not to be uh, <laughs> Uh, push to use uh, uh, online platforms all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm coming. I'm almost there. I, I think it's wor really worth for, for our participants to, to imagine how it works. So, so it would be really great. If... So I'm going to share my screen mm -hmm. again. Okay, now we can... And uh, well, this is the surface. Oh, uh -huh. It's synchronizing uh, the groups. Okay. And, um, well, it is in Hungarian, but it could be set uh, uh, in English. So what you can see here, these are my actual groups. And if I open a group, I can see uh, I can see the recent tasks I have assigned to them. And if I, uh, here I can see how many of my students uh, have already done the task. And uh, if I'm, uh, if I look, uh, if I uh, switch to student um, participation, then I can see their initials and the extent to which they could uh, complete uh, the tasks and by clicking on a, an, indiv uh, an individual student, I can see what has he or she already done. And also uh, here, we here uh, I can see a list of uh, strengths. So Legerősebb uh, Nyelvtani Kérség extends for uh, the most powerful grammar uh, competencies and uh, here I can see the areas uh, uh, that should be improved. So this was a great uh, way to differentiate. And um, um, when um, I'm, I will go back to show uh, the whole group. And when, uh, when I assigned them tasks, there is an embedded curricula in, uh, in Xeropan. So this is, um, the logo of the applications uh, application and there's an embedded curricula so I might have decided to start from scratches but uh, um, with my groups I decided to look for um, more focused uh, um, uh, language areas and here I can 
set the level of the language I uh, was targeting, and these were the, uh, the topical areas to be choose from, and also I could select grammar areas and vocabulary as well. Um, and it offered very, very quickly um, tasks to be assigned. And when I assigned these tasks, I obviously I could set the deadline, but most importantly, I could select which students to assign these tasks. Uh, and this was really a great way uh, uh, for differentiation. Now I'm going to stop sharing again to move back to my slides. And unfortunately, I'm running out of time. So I will speed up my presentation and sorry for the delay. So I mentioned Xeropan as uh, my individual resource at that time, but nowadays, uh, luckily it's available for, uh, uh, for the whole level of uh, public education. Uh, as for uh, the challenges in the second phase, uh, as I have mentioned, uh, we were uh, more confident with digital tools, but more vulnerable psychologically. And also I found more difficult to maintain my students and my own motivation as well. And it was uh, even more difficult to navigate through the resources as uh, uh, they, the number of their number became <laughs> very difficult to follow and time management become became an issue um, as uh, I realized that the same things that were um, yeah, so um, the everything uh, um, needed more time online than it would have uh, been done um, in real life in the classroom as for other types of struggles, um, I was challenged um, to feel and prove that my students had actually learned the content effectively. And here, um, Seropan was also uh, was also a great help for me as I could follow their uh, uh, performance and their progress. And I experienced uh, similar patterns in classwork participation to face-to-face -face times, but uh, persistent. Uh, reluctance became worse with remotely conducted lessons. Uh, students came up with a large variety of excuses, like from no internet connection to my mother's bunny bit the internet cable. Uh, students were not willing to speak up and um, I experienced that as time went by, it was more difficult to keep my students away from multitasking. And uh, I could sense fatigue uh, coming from prolonged uh, technology use. As for the benefits, I couldn't mention many, and the majority of them is common knowledge. Like uh, uh, it was uh, um, an opportunity uh, for increasing my autonomy, which it actually did. And I hope to develop learn autonomy in language learning. And I did uh, a longitudinal, longitudinal research uh, concerning uh, their autonomy development. And uh, by the end of uh, this two year period, I realized that um, the change was very slight. And me, myself, I had to become more flexible. I need to push my boundaries. Um, Obviously, um, the range of websites increased and we became more literate uh, digitally and uh, uh, I still use uh, much more um, ICT tools than uh, I had used previously, but the most important uh, um, thing for me is that uh, it raised awareness of the need for real social, real life social uh, interaction. So to conclude, uh, I couldn't uh, sense any um, or not much uh, student performance if I look at the average and uh, very slight increase in autonomous learning. Um, and the obvious uh, um, result is uh, a definite rise in uh, confidence um, in using ICT tools, both teachers and, uh, and students. All right, that was my presentation. Thanks for listening to me and I'm sorry for uh, taking uh, more time than <laughs> I planned. 
thank you very much. Uh, it was great, and um, I think it was worth to, to show um, the, the, the picture, the image of, um, of the tool you use, so we can uh, better uh, imagine how it works. Thank you very much. And again, uh, for those of you who have questions to, to our presenters, you can either write them on chat, or you can um, ask um, personally, uh, also um, um, share your suggestions, good practices. After, um, after the, the presentations, we have still one presentation. Uh, so now we move from Hungary to Italy. Uh, and our next uh, presenter uh, will be uh, Antonio Tagliatella, uh, who is a, a researcher in English uh, linguistics and translation at Tuskia University, uh, co-director of the Summer School in British Anglo-American Cultural Studies, University of Urbino. Uh, recently, he has been appointed also as a research fellow by the Englishers LLP uh, International Research Training Directorate uh, in Turkey, and for the same organization, he also operates as training director. Uh, his research interests and publication fields range from English as a lingua franca and intercultural communication to EU uh, multilingualism and plain English and he has presented internationally on these topics. He is a member of the executive board of the Italian Association of Foreign Language Teachers and the Italian Association for English Studies, among others. So, uh, Antonio. Hello. You, hello. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, uh, thank you, you should, uh, you should uh, enable my function as a co-host. Okay, I'm doing that. Sorry, sorry. No problem. No, that's sometimes you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's you might have functioning of this uh, multitasking. Okay. Yes, that's Hello, right. I, I'm really sorry. Yes, now uh, of course you are the co-host. Now you have the power to uh, to start your presentation. Very good. Just bear with me a moment and. Oh, okay, I will do everything right now. Okay. We are very international today. Yeah, we are. We are you know, we are. traveling great. all around the world. Great, great. absolutely. <laughs> just, just confirm you're you're able to to see my screen. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Everything's perfect. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, thank you for the introduction, Joanna, and thank you for the invite to participate in this very interesting webinar regarding teaching tools in distant English language teaching. I just wanted to stress that I have highlighted tools because what I'm going to talk about refers to tool both as a pedagogical methodology and as an IT tool. My presentation is indeed titled Adjusting Flipped Learning to Teach English Translation Remotely by Moodle and Zoom, an experience from the pandemic. It is very much connected with Dr. Asma's detailed presentation, but I will not highlight the Moodle features, rather I refer to Moodle as a platform implemented with Zoom for my flipped translation lectures in the first phase of the pandemic. Um, very good. Um, the presentation draws from my chapter, which is included in Ferret and Joanna's great edited volume, The Challenges and Opportunities of Teaching English Worldwide in a COVID-19 Pandemic, just a little bit of self-promotion. Um, and to present my contribution, I'm going to give you initially a little bit of context. I'll talk about the flipped learning method used by the Moodle and Zoom platforms. I'll present my own experience with the adjustment of the flip learning method to deliver English translation classes at university. And then I'll draw some conclusions. Hopefully I will still have time to do that. Sorry, because I'm rushing, that's why. Uh, we all know that two years ago, the COVID-19 pandemic challenged established pedagogical frameworks globally due to the sharp increase of remote teaching and reveal the flaws of traditional practices in this respect. For example, little time provided for the materials preparation, lack of adequate technological and structural facilities in many schools and universities. Both teachers and learners poor IT skills necessary for remote teaching and learning. 
initial reluctance among students to accept online lessons as equal to in-person lessons, the loss of the important human component during the interaction, and so on. These are the sources I, from where I extracted these dates. Um, pandemic, when the pandemic started, of course, we as teaching professionals were called to promptly find alternative methods and materials to cope with the emergency. And we had to make sure that our online teaching classes could guarantee all students similar conditions as in-person classes. In my case, as a lecturer of English translation, Similarly to, to all of you, I guess, I had to review my teaching methods and materials and ensure that my students were provided with good teaching standards and could consequently achieve the expected learning objectives. So after a quick exploration, I found that the flipped learning method could be the most suitable option for me. But clearly, I had to adjust it anyway to a university classroom and to my subject. Just consider that I teach a 60 hour module in English translation for a BA program in modern languages and cultures. This program generally attracts around 80 participants in the first year at my university, typically aged 80, 19 years. So you can imagine how difficult it could be to hold only to hold, to hold online classes where a large group of students were involved and needed to be engaged productively at the same level, possibly. Therefore, the pedagogical approach had to be inclusive and capable of helping students to acquire the fundamentals of the discipline. So, as I said, the flipped learning method seemed to be the best option for me at that time. This is a type of blended learning that reverses the traditional um, educational arrangement in which the teacher is the primary source of information. With flipped learning, the learner becomes central. With its existing e-learning platform model, my university was able to respond to this emergency as an improvement. The platform was soon updated and implemented with the Zoom platform, and which is a cloud-based application for inclusion. Um, for the, it regards uh, obviously audio and uh, video conferencing. But another interesting inclusion was the the, Reedy, the easy reading font, a typeface designed to help people with dyslexia read quicker and more easily. Therefore, all students could access. Uh, their personal Moodle accounts to attend asynchronously virtual classes and download the related lesson materials. For information, in a typical flipped learning lesson, teachers should record their lessons in the first place and offer them to students via videos and or podcasts for asynchronous access. Therefore, students can acquire knowledge from these materials before participating in scheduled lessons and use their class time to practice and apply the concepts and ideas studied at home through co-constructive interactions with their peers and teachers. I had to adjust this approach to fit my online class requirements due to issues that arose. First, lessons were live streamed and I hadn't had enough time to create a lesson plan, including pre-recorded videos or podcasts as envisaged by the flipped learning method. Second, translation theory could not be satisfactorily imparted through these tools prior to lessons at that time. Now things have changed. Third, my lessons were generally lecture-based, which means that lectures were delivered verbally in combination with a projector with low interaction with my students. And a lecture-based approach is considered prevailingly an instructor-centered and content-oriented approach, as opposed to the learner-centered approach of flipped learning. My online lessons lasted roughly two hours, and were held three times a week for the entire semester, 
namely three months, and were structured around four principal phases. This is the first one, translation theory importation. So presenting the topic and imparting initially all necessary theoretical notions via lecture-based approach, depending on the topic, this could require multiple lessons. During this phase, students could learn the source text, well, could learn the, the basics or the fundamentals of translation uh, theory. Uh, text presentation, this means sharing the source text to be translated on screen and starting the discussion, uh, then uploading it uh, within seconds to the relevant Moodle section. And this, of course, was useful because it was a sort of brainstorming activity uh, to engage students actively in discussion and debate. At the end, there was the assignment section, assigning students the translation of a new similar text intended for the following lesson while encouraging their critical reflection at home. And then discussion, opening the new lesson with a general and interactive recap of the previous lesson, then engaging students in highlighting and discussing co-constructively any translation issues they encountered with their self-study. This was a, a, a model I, I, I thought to, to propose to advance for you if, uh, for example, you're in, if you're interested in translation uh, theory, in teaching translation, and so on. Um, let's go on. This way, under my guidance, students could take random turns reading portions of their translation, and while doing so, their fellow students could make their comments or observations based on my input, thus helping to improve the texts translated by their peers. In turn, the other students could also improve their own translations by taking notes of the corrections and amendments suggested. It may be important to say that those students who could not attend a given class synchronously and who were unable to benefit from co-constructive peer collaborations were instead able to reach me by email to seek clarifications, which helped to diminish their feelings of disadvantage. Overall, there were several benefits to adjusting the flipped learning method for use in my online classes. This generally provided students with a deeper understanding of the concepts, application and content. They received my support upon request and were given immediate feedback also by peers. I got even acquainted with most of them by their names and this gave a touch of humanity to the online environment. Obviously, what I'm saying is not my own opinion or a sort of illusion. The results were corroborated by the positive outcomes of a compulsory, anonymized and structured questionnaire, including 14 questions, which all students had to complete at the end of the 2019-2020 academic year, prior to taking the English translation examination. Among other things, most students passed this exam with satisfactory marks. Regarding the questionnaire, the outcomes of four of the 14 questions uh, were selected and the, the areas um, that the, the questions referred to were discipline, the type of discipline, so translate, English translation in this case, teaching methodology, uh, interest raised by the teacher, and overall satisfaction emphasized, uh, overall satisfaction, and these four areas emphasized a high degree uh, of, of appreciation, we can say. Uh, the 87 respondents uh, had these four options available, completely satisfied, partially satisfied, partially dissatisfied, completely dissatisfied. The four questions selected in detail were, does the teaching material used provide uh, the fundamentals of the discipline. 40, as you can see, 94.25% satisfaction. Does the teacher stimulate, motivate, or interest in the discipline? 
97.7% satisfaction. D, the teaching approach facilitate subject acquisition, 98.68% satisfaction. And finally, are you overall satisfied with how this module was structured and managed? 94.25 satisfaction. So this was a great result, um, as you can see. Um, but there were also issues and challenges with flipped learning in remote English um, translation teaching. Teachers' support is not as consistent um, in the online format, because when you are uh, in person, you can support physically uh, and directly uh, your students. And you can give, uh, obviously, uh, a feedback, which can be an immediate feedback. Then there may be technical problems, so slow connections, uh, outdated uh, IT devices, etc. And so developing my module contents to deliver English translation classes with a practical orientation in a virtual environment for more attendees was certainly one of the major uh, difficulties I encountered and also ensuring supervision and support to all the participants, because uh, obviously when you have such a, a large number of participants, uh, I talked about 80 participants in the average, uh, is, hard, is very, very difficult, is hard. And you cannot monitor all the, uh, you know, the, their acquisitions and their learning, even if the outcomes of the questionnaire uh, was uh, positive uh, in the end, and even if the, the marks that the students got uh, after their final examination were great. The conclusions. In my online classes, the integration of the flipped learning approach helps students combine their acquired understanding of theoretical notions see phase one of the model I suggested, with relevant empirical applications involving specific translation materials in two distinct moments. That is to say, during the preliminary group discussion of the text when presented for translation in phase two for the brainstorming uh, activity, and when students collaboratively presented their translated texts while receiving comments from peers in phase Four. So during the, 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 the during the, the following lesson, as well, the, the, the lesson that followed the, as you remember, as I said, the, that followed the, the theory interpretation and the, and the delivery of all the notion and um, concepts uh, required by the, um, by the topic dealt with in that moment. The flipped learning approach was ultimately a valuable method that enabled me to incorporate meaningful and interactive practical activities into my online English translation classes. This is what I found uh, in the end. I just display once again the textbook, well, the, this volume uh, edited by Farid, Johan and Rachel, which I found great, with several contributions from every part of the world and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for your great presentation and um, of course for, uh, for the promotion of the book as well. <laughs> uh, yes, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, for um, all our speakers today uh, for approving our, our invitation and uh, being with us, uh, preparing those great presentations. Uh, so I guess now we can start uh, the question time. And uh, as I said, um, for all of you, for all of you, for all presenters, there are many uh, nice words of gratitude and thanks uh, from our uh, participants. You can uh, uh, see them on on chat. Uh, and now. Uh, you can either write your uh, question on the chat box or you can uh, raise your hand and if you have a question, uh, then uh, you can ask the question um, personally. So um, our presenters are, uh, are uh, waiting for uh, your questions. Uh, so uh, before there are any questions from the audience, 
are there any questions from the audience or we are just waiting also oh, so yes we have the first person who would like to ask the question uh, now uh, i guess uh, i will try to do something uh, to unmute you because all our participants are uh, unmuted i don't know wait a moment i will try to do it uh, now i guess you can unmute yourself now um Iman, uh, sorry, can you um can you hear us? You can yes, you can unmute yourself. Yes, now you can ask your question. Hello, can you hear uh, me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Thank you, thank you so much, Miss Joanna. You know that uh, that I have recourse to your book, uh, challenges and opportunities of teaching English in COVID nineteen time of COVID nineteen. It's really interesting because right now I'm working on my dissertation, so it was really helpful. Oh, I would like to thank you for this uh, interesting webinar. Great presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. But you so, know, uh, there, uh, I, yeah. I would like to add only that the book as the common work. We were only like me, yes, but, but without those great people who are uh, today uh, with us, who are with us during the last webinars, there wouldn't be uh, this book. So, so it's uh, you know, I have this impression that it's such a, a joint, uh, great work, and I. Feel that really, I don't know. Yes, it is. Uh, there were actually different narratives from different teachers. That's yeah. Our idea. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you so much. Actually, I have three questions for the for the, the three presenters. Great. So my first question is um, for uh, Ms. Uh, our Dr. Uh, Rahnani Asma. Yeah. So uh, according to you, what are the best practices for teaching remotely? regardless of the problems that you have reported. So this is my questions, whether they are technical or pedagogical. My second question is for our teacher, their teacher, Christina. How did you manage to prepare students to deal with this unexpected shift toward distant learning, whether it is emotionally or uh, emotional or physical resources? How did you manage? You know that students, they were not ready. I am a student at university and this uh, shift we were not ready when it comes to emotional and physical resources how did you manage to prepare them my last questions to uh, our professor antonio so according to you and listening to your reflections uh, your experience it was valuable it was gratifying so um as a teacher we know that teachers well-being is nourished by positive experience so um, with these new norms of teaching remotely, how do you think or to what extent do you think that this new experience uh, has it's impacted your uh, well-being as a teacher? Is there any recommendations? And thank you so much. Thank you so much for great questions. Now uh, it's turn for our, um, uh, our guests. Uh, I, I guess we can start with, um, uh, with um, uh, Dr. Asma Rahman. Okay, uh, so first I would like to thank uh, Iman for your uh, question. Iman, I would like uh, to know from which university you are, uh, you are, uh, you belong. Uh, yes, I am Algerian. I belong to Ibn Khaldun University, Yeah. Uh, the, the west of Algeria, that's it. Yes, west of Algeria. Okay, so nice to meet you, Iman. Iman it's a when... pleasure to have you. Yes, thank you, Iman. Iman, as we all know that uh, at the, uh, the beginning of applying the online learning, we suffered teachers and learners from the poor uh, infrastructure, internet infrastructure. So the main um, uh, hindrances that faced us is the lack of uh, computers among students, uh, the internet-related problem, uh, these two elements harden the mission uh, or the transition toward the online learning. Uh, second or the second problem is the learner's re resistance toward this type of learning. I remember that before adapting the Moodle platform, I tried all the, uh, the, the instructions from the ministry were uh, was as it, as it follows. So um, 
we have to post uh, courses using only PDFs. So uh, it was difficult for learners, uh, particularly for the uh, department of the media and communication. As you know, it's uh, it's not they are not teaching them uh, English uh, as it is needed. So I try to create um, uh, Google classrooms and uh, and try to uh, prepare courses using a PowerPoint presentation and recording uh, videos in order to help them. So uh, when I use their uh, Facebook groups in order to inform them that uh, some courses are available, uh, you try to watch these videos or presentations. So the majority of learners are using hashtag no online learning, no online learning. So you see, so at the beginning, uh, they, uh, they resisted the use of this type of learning. After that, they, they started to adapt to this uh, new uh, learning environment. And particularly with the adoption of Moodle uh, platform, learners feel more comfortable to learn using online learning, particularly, as I said, uh, with the variety of uh, resources uh, that were available in this uh, platform. So I hope that I answered your question, Ima. Thank you so much, Dr. Asma. Well yeah. noted. So that's it, uh, Dr. Nwana. Thank you very much. Now, um, um, Christina, could you could you um, answer the second question? Yes, of course, and thanks for it, Iman. Um, well, I think that the two things that uh, might have helped my students uh, get to the difficulties, the psychological difficulties uh, through online, uh, caused by online learning uh, were the warm-up activities and the switched on cameras. So I think that teaching a language is, um, gives us the opportunity to, to connect to students uh, um, easier as we can touch upon almost everything uh, that uh, they, they bring to, to the class. So. Um, I tried to start all my classes with some kind of a warm up when uh, I gave some time to them to connect to each other and also to me and ask some uh, general questions about their well being and about their context or circumstances and also um, after a while I. Uh, um, uh, required them to, to switch on their cameras and they, they had to uh, switch it on and at that time they were reluctant but later on the feedback they, they gave me was that uh, that was the best part of their day that they could see each other they could make comments on each other's room background decoration of the room whatever so that made a somewhat um, real life like uh, uh, presence. So warm up and, and switched on cameras is my, my brief answer for the question. Thank you very much. And sometimes it's very tough with those cameras, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> to convince that that it's it's much greater just to see each other and, and to have this kind of interaction. Um, yeah. Um, um, by the way, I, I would like to um, uh, ask uh, at this moment, um, if I may, um, uh, because you, you mentioned that that um, with with online class, it's much uh, it takes some more much more time. You know, the the um, how how did you deal with that? Because it's uh, it's also my problem to be honest, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, I usually plan you know a thousand things, and then I I really do only two or three which is of course uh, as well as, uh, satisfactory but still you know you you have this feeling that oh my god normally i i should do like much more uh well yes i i had to cope with with this frustration but uh, after a while i realized that uh, that uh, it's better to select uh, the activities smartly and do a um, smaller amount of them, but, uh, but uh, um, do it um, properly or go deeper. And still the frustration remained that uh, I couldn't cover what I planned, but I think that uh, this way it was a better learning experience for the students that they didn't experience the rush, but they could take their time to, to get through the activities. 
thank you very much. Uh, and now uh, we are ask, uh, we will ask Antonio to answer the, the first question. And then there are all also questions to, I guess, you all on the chat. So, so we'll um, uh, make a second round of, of question oh, right. answers. So, <laughs> OK, uh, so your, your answer to the okay. great yeah. question. Thank you, Iman, for your, for your question. So uh, how did I feel at the beginning of the, of the pandemic, managing the pandemic and the stress of the pandemic? It was really, really hard. Uh, it was um, stressful uh, at all levels. But uh, as uh, Christina uh, said earlier, she used uh, two interesting terms that I really enjoyed when she said, there was an overnight change and also there was an uncharted territory. So uh, I was not really keen on using modal, for example. Uh, and uh, at the beginning, the, the Zoom platform was not implemented in Zoom at my university. I had to uh, resort to a different tool, which was only based on, uh, on a on a recording uh, function. It's called Audacity. I don't know if you if you ever heard about that. And so you could edit your recording um, right in the middle uh, as you preferred. But it was really, really, really time consuming because all the lessons that I had prepared were basically uh, really practical. Uh, because when uh, students attend in-person classes, uh, obviously you can monitor, you can supervise their work and you can intervene when necessary. But when they are online, uh, yes, they can participate in interaction. They can contribute their observations to the discussion. But basically, uh, if, for example, they have their webcam switched off, uh, you cannot see anything. So um, it's been hard to, to manage. And as I said, it was really time consuming. Uh, what I learned from this experience is to uh, very much uh, use a sort of humanistic teaching approach, um, as uh, mentioned by Arifi, uh, a scholar uh, that in uh, 2017 wrote an article about this. And basically, he said that um, a humanistic teaching approach to foreign language teaching enhances self-confidence among students while developing their social and emotional abilities, since success in learning a foreign language is determined by the cognitive structure of an individual, as well as within their emotional and affective spheres, which are bound to personality traits. So even when I used their names um, that obviously in a, in when I was in person, uh, I, I, I didn't do. This is something that I couldn't do because they were in a, in a, in a normal situation. Having 80 students in front of you, uh, obviously, cannot, uh, is very hard to, to manage. And so you, you don't learn their names. Ju ju just say um, uh, the, the, the lady there or the mister or the, 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 your fellow student next to you or similar expressions. So there's a humanistic teaching approach, uh, this um, sensitivity to uh, sometimes, um, uh, to words, their frustration uh, when during their learning uh, was one of the lessons that I learned. And this is something that, you know, I would like to share with all of you, uh, according to my experience. I don't know if I uh, answered in a way your, your question, Iman. Thank you so much. You're welcome. 
thank you very much. Um, I um, I can see one question uh, from the person um, uh, from one of our participants on the chat, and I guess that's the question to all of you. So, I guess it would be great if uh, all of you could could answer. Uh, could you recommend any tool that can help us avoid cheating in online class? Mm. Very tough question, and maybe this time we'll, we'll start with uh, with Antonio. Okay. Well, I um, I knew a tool which we uh, tried to to use. I don't remember exactly the name, but my university has a, a short period license. Uh, it was a tool um, designed by a Swedish company and uh, it was used for writing activities. Um, if I, if I, uh, I, I should, I, I, unfortunately, I don't remember the name, but at the moment, because we, we, I just used them once uh, and then the, the license was not renewed by, uni by our university. And there was a shame. I, I don't know the reason why that happened, but I, I found that um, useful because each time one student uh, changed the, the, the page uh, on their computer um, in these, uh, from these software, um, a sort of pop-up, um, you know, uh, was, was, could be seen on the screen uh, signaling that the, the, the student switched the page. And so you could intervene and um, even uh, modify the, the, the features, the, the settings of the student uh, um, uh, of the student uh, web page, because all students should have been uh, should had to be connected in this system. So uh, they were they were all in the same platform and uh, the, the system could monitor you know their their activities during the the, the writing task um, unfortunately i don't know the name but uh, if um christina and asma uh, can help uh, would be great in the meantime i can search through the web to see if i if i you know uh, if i find it uh, once again but that was very useful anyway. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, uh, and I guess, Christina, could you, uh, could you uh, answer the question? Well, uh, my view um, of uh, preventing cheating in online education, I think that it's something like a race between teachers and students who are smarter in using technology. And um, uh, after a while, I just let it go and try to make my, to increase my students' motivation so that they wanted to do the tasks and they wanted to uh, improve their knowledge uh, because I knew that they can be present on multiple platforms with multiple devices communi communicating with each other. So after a while, I just uh, let it go and try to um, be as closely connected to them as it's, it was possible. And <laughs> I can't come up with any any uh, working uh, platforms or a piece of advice for uh, fighting cheating. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, uh, and now comment from Asma. Thank you. Okay, so um, basically I have introduced in my presentation what is uh, called or named the uh, bank of question. So uh, this resource assisted me to uh, lessen the uh, degree of plagiarism among my students. Because um, whenever I try, for instance, to create a course, each time I notice that this is a question, I note it, okay? And I save it in this bank. Then I relied on certain classification, basically the Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, so as we know, uh, there is six levels. I, I try to enrich a, each level uh, using, uh, for instance, at least 20 questions for each level. So whenever I try to create an exam, the, uh, the, the, 
the, uh, there is an option in the Moodle that permit uh, the students to have different, quest different questions in the same um, test. So in this way, uh, learners will depend on, that, on themselves to uh, answer the questions. Also, we should limit the time of the exams. So this will uh, allow learners to concentrate more on, the, uh, on answering the questions by themselves rather than go, for instance, to Google. And also, uh, whenever I ask my learners to develop essays, I use the Grammarly Checker and at the same time, Turrentine, I think, uh, uh, plagiarism detector. So once I get the result, I email for the learners. And uh, what, what was um, the, the trick that I use it, I always uh, make a trial exam. So if learners uh, try to uh, copy and paste information, when they receive the, uh, the report from this uh, plagiarism detector, they will be shocked. So they won't repeat uh, doing the same thing again. So this is my uh, my tricks, if I can say. Thank you very much for sharing those tricks and and experience, good practices uh, on how to avoid cheating. Uh, I guess we have still uh, one question there um, uh, from Professor Dolizo. Uh, would you um, uh, ask the the, the, per the question personally? Because I saw that on on the chat. In the Would meantime, you like if you allow me to to yes. add something, Joanna, yes, yes, I, I just please. posted a, a message in the in the chat box yes. uh, about the, the 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 website, the platform uh, I was talking about, and is um, I know for a fact that uh, a license is needed, but there's a trial, so you can uh, there are tutorials and very easy tutorials for the implementation of these uh, application or the software. In in the you know in 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 our lessons and you know you it can be tested uh, and see how it works uh, you know so you have the chance to do that if you wish just to say that thank you thank you very much thank you very much for your your uh, generous suggestion and help uh, support for all teachers um, uh, yes uh, Tamari now can you can you unmute yourself yeah. yes. I guess it's it's more Once valuable again. to create a discussion that, that you can Thank you for uh, allowing answer your yes. question personally. Thank you, Jona, and at the same time, good evening, and thank you for a very interesting presentation, though we are a kind of like a more or less returning to old normal, still uh, like we are discussing kind of benefits, and it was very interesting for me to hear different perspectives from different kind of experiences, and I really value, because still what I'm interested in, what are kind of uh, some benefits or takeaways major, which you are still going to maintain in your learning curriculum, uh, because somehow pandemic gave us good lessons and uh, that's what I feel that we need to kind of like um, maintain, introduce and make our learning experience uh, some, some, somehow still uh, just um, uh, as effective as possible. And uh, I'm interested maybe to hear your opinion, speaker's opinion, what are you going to kind of, are you going to change any or propose any amendments or changes in your learning curriculum? Uh, if it's allowed, for, for example, in my reality in Georgia, we are kind of allowed to do hybrid learning, which is very comfortable because still there are some cases, some students are not still adapted, they started to work, that's why I'm really interested to hear, the, because if you're kind of like um, planning to propose any changes in your uh, learning reality, thank you in advance. Thank you very much. And uh, this time, I guess we can start with, uh, with um, uh, Dr. Rahmani. Can you can you answer the question? Actually, I did not hear her uh, well. Please, would you uh, repeat it for me, uh, Joanna? Um, yes, the question was um, if you, because, you know, we all um, experience, I, I uh, love this definition, that's why I I'm, I'm, um, uh, keep quoting it, this, this great online transition. And uh, um, after this great online transition, um, there are some changes. And the question is, if you want to, um, if I understood that correctly, um, uh, if you want to change anything in your curriculum now, because we, we generally uh, came back to the, to the normality, to, to, to normal classes. Are there any, any kind of 
um, the changes you would like to introduce or, or would you like to uh, still uh, keep some some good practices from this this um, very uh, let's say difficult time of, of pandemic uh, in your teaching or teaching module or yeah was was that your uh, your intention Tamari well, am I am I yes, right absolutely perfect <laughs> reformulation <laughs> thank you Joanna thank you uh, uh, Dr Tamari uh, here in my countries um, after the pandemic in the post uh, pandemic era they advised us to keep both mode of learning the uh, presential or in in person uh, courses and the uh, the online courses the hybrid learning so uh, in this time the online learning is used to reinforce the in person courses and uh, by doing so uh, we have more time to practice, uh, particularly uh, practicing uh, what we what we saw uh, in in classes. So, uh, according to my experience and uh, my opinion, uh, this pandemic uh, assisted us to uh, upgrade and reinforce the uh, learning quality. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. And um, uh, Antonio, because yeah. you are there waiting for... for yeah, uh... yeah. Uh, no problem. I'm sure... What, 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 well, what I can say is that from the pandemic, um, what I learned, I was talking about this uh, earlier, this humanistic approach. So the it is important. You said you, were, you did agree with me, Tamari. Um, it is important to show uh, students that you are not the teacher, that you are not the instructor, but you are a facilitator. Uh, you are a sort of mediator between what they know and want to know and what should be known, you know, by them. Um, so I think this is the key. This um, this humanistic uh, teaching approach, which I uh, you know um, I uh, studied a bit more in depth during the pandemic, allowed me to do so, and it was very much appreciated. I think because I saw even the percentage uh, resulting from the questionnaire that the students compulsorily had to uh, complete at the end of the semester. One immediate advantage was that students were not worried when making mistakes, even when considering the possibility of receiving negative feedback from, from me or from their fellow students. Um, I think that comments were, uh, and observations were considered constructive, especially because I encouraged them to focus on achieving the best result, the best translation possible in a way that would increase their knowledge. This is what I learned from the pandemic. And also um, uh, a two-way uh, interaction, not no longer a teacher-centered pedagogy, but a learner-centered pedagogy. So these are the two main lessons that I learned from the pandemic, and then I'm still keeping with me. Thank you. You're welcome. What's it? Thank you. Thank you uh, very much. You also mentioned this great uh, word, which is uh, student involvement. Yeah, that's that's Thank also you. a key point nowadays. Absolutely. Yes. Great messages. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you. Uh, and Christina, could you uh, share your opinion? Of course, and thanks for the question. Uh, well, I have to agree with uh, both Asma and Antonio. So I think that our roles as teachers changed a lot. And uh, um, myself, I experience as a good thing that uh, from knowledge providers, we, we can uh, be guides and uh, um, managers of uh, the learning process. And uh, as for Asma's answer, I think that the platforms we used uh, um, 
should be uh, should be kept or at least here in in secondary and tertiary education uh, it's uh, 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 an advice to to use uh, uh, teams or Moodle, depending on the uh, institution for, for communication with students. And I think that this helps uh, us teachers and students as well to, to be in contact with each other, to, to give instant answers, which can be a disadvantage for us teachers being at reach. Uh, all the time, but uh, I think that uh, it's uh, it's um, a good element of uh, um, this uh, pandemic uh, um, period uh, to to keep these uh, online platforms. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I guess that our uh, time is, um, uh, is finishing uh, for this meeting and so you did great jobs, all of you. And thank you very much for your great participation. Uh, once again, for our participants, the link to the certificates is on the chat. Uh, thank you all, all once again, all of you. Uh, if I might ask you to write your email addresses because they, there might be more questions still our um, maybe our participants would like to contact you so if you don't mind uh, please write your email addresses uh, in the chat so so that um, 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 our participants can can contact you so thank you very much once again I would also uh, like to announce uh, our next webinar on the 24th of June. Uh, please feel invited. Also, uh, you all um, uh, received from us the, the, the info about the conference. Um, I would only um, um, announce that our keynote speaker will be uh, Professor Belize there. So, so we are uh, very happy to, to, um, uh, to have you there. Uh, also, if you have any questions, you can always contact me um, uh, or um, uh, um, uh, Farid. Um, so, uh, so do not hesitate. Uh, I, uh, I would like uh, also uh, tell you one more thing that if you have any call for papers you would like to share with our, uh, with our um, participants, uh, with uh, people who, who um, are um, uh, interested in, in our international dialogue, please do not hesitate, you can send them to, to us and we'll share them. So that's from, from me, from, um, uh, from Ferit as well. And thank you once again for, for all your great uh, contribution. And it was really great, the discussion was great. And uh, this feeling of being a part of international team, because I, I feel that like that, it's, it's really wonderful. And I would like to wish you a great, a great weekend. You too. Bye-bye, thank you very much. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. You. Thank you.